Two events to go in the 125 East Series. Team Sophie Suzuki's Brandon Jessamin is the man to catch. With wins in Minnesota, Indianapolis, and St. Louis, and podium finishes at each of the other three events, it's very unlikely that he'll let the title slip from his grasp. However, Kawasaki's Mike Brown would like to see otherwise. His record of five out of six finishes on the podium has placed him only 10 points behind the leader. Yamaha Troy rider Brock Sellers won a main event early on and looked promising, but injuries and a tough blow dealt by Brown last week in St. Louis has left him 24 points behind Jessamine, with a scant 10 points between our top two. Consistency will be the key, and this stop in Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas will be pivotal to the points lead. Stay tuned, this is the THQ 125 AMA Supercross Series. for the sixth of seven stops of the 125 East AMA Supercross Series. Hello once again, everybody. Todd Harris along with my partner, David Bailey. Back in the house, the champ is here. Glad to have you back, David. Well, I'll tell you what, last week in St. Louis, it was a tale of two races and two racers. Mike Brown looked like he had things under control, maybe a little impatient. Well, you know, I thought he had a lot of confidence coming off of Daytona, and he apparently did. I thought that with that confidence, he'd be able to relax just a little bit more. Aggression is not his problem. As you can see right there, he takes down Brock Sellers on his way to the front, but a little bit too over-anxious too early in the race. Another aggressive move on Kelly Smith, but that time he really ran the risk of going down himself. He did, in fact, go down, cost him a lot of positions and points. Jessamine going by right there to pick up another win, his third, and a 10-point lead in the series. Well, Brandon Jessamine has been the pitcher of cool, calm, and collect. He rode the race of a lifetime last week. Why? Because he was patient. He let the race come to him, and he looks just as comfortable here in Houston. Well, he does, you know, and ever since the first race of the season, it's just he's just looked like a champion. And when he lost in Daytona and made a mistake there and Brown picked it up, I thought, well, maybe that momentum is shifting a little bit, but Jessamine is back in control. And Steve Boniface on board the KTM able to hold off Mike Brown, so he was on the podium last week securing second place. As we take a look at our Suzuki 125 East Series standing it's Brandon Jessamine atop the board, followed by Mike Brown, Brock Sellers, Kelly Smith, and then a tie for fifth between Brett Metcalf and Eric Vallejo. Two more races still to go in this series, so anyone can grab it here in the 125 East, but points are starting to become a very high premium. Right now, let's check in with the hardest working man of our crew. Of course, we're talking about Cameron Steele. left-hand corners and over a triple that sends you into the real triple. Then my favorite section, C.E. Altman Mountain. It's the highest elevation of any Supercross track we'll see all season. That shoots into the finish line jump across the start and back to the first corner. 125, heat number one on the line from Houston, Texas. Reliance Stadium, what a spectacular park this is. As we take a look at Team Pro Circuit's Michael Brown. And David, I got to think that last week is probably weighing still heavy in his mind, but as a coach, you got to know he's got to forget about what happened last week. Yeah, you can't pack any of that and bring it to Houston. You got to put it behind you and realize, okay, well, I was a little over anxious. The mechanics are probably telling him, hey, just settle down and ride nice and relax, and it should be good enough. Mike Brown is such a solid performer. And look who's back, Ivan Tedesco. And I think a lot of people are expecting big things from the Boost Mobile Yamaha.
hot rider. I am, you know, and, and Johnny O'Mara's been over there coaching that team a little bit, and he had big expectations as well for Ivan. And anytime you see Ivan on the racetrack, he looks great, excellent style, plenty of intensity. He's had some weird breaks this season that have kept him out of the title chase. Ivan Tedesco, number 52 on the Yamaha, keep an eye on him, and the pride of KTM right now in the 125 division, Brett Metcalf out of Australia, Red Bull KTM racing team. 18 years of age, and they've got a lot of pressure on him as we take a look at our Nissan starting grid. There's Michael Brown, Brock Sellers, and Brett Metcalf. Then the French rider, Matthew Leilaz, is in there, and Tedesco. Tiger Lacey's also back in the chase. So this heat number one is extremely tight. There's four or five guys right there, David, who can pick up the whole shot. Ford about to go sideways. Watch the body English of these guys. You can tell immediately they click it into gear with their left foot and stare at the gate. 30 board is sideways, 125 east, heat number one on the line. The gate drops, Michael Brown gets a good start, but he gets pitched off and just shooting to the front is 123, Brett Metcalf. So it was Metcalf and Sellers, who I thought would get a great start together just because of the power they have and where they were lined up. And look at Tiger Lacey, he's in the mix too. And here comes Brock Sellers on the gas, with Mike Brown right behind him. So it's Metcalf out in front, Brock Sellers flies in the second, Tedesco in third, Brown now making a move. Tedesco got hung up there through that tough whoop section, so that's moved Brown into third place. So it's Metcalf, Sellers, and Brown, one, two, and three here in heat number one. triple no problem. Sellers always starting out good. He always at the front to take a look at the leader. He gets a nice move put on him by Brown who continues that aggressive riding. He's got a bunched up pack behind him and he's already pulled away from him so he doesn't have to ride defensive anymore. Brown from fifth to second on lap number one and it looks like their aggression is not left in St. Louis and here he goes to work on Metcalf on the outside. Metcalf trying to hold his line. Brown squares it off. defensive move or what, but it looked like he tried to pin his inside as Mike Brown moves the first. Well, Brown knew what Metcalf was thinking. He knew Metcalf would just try to stay to the inside and have him at the corner, but Brown just figured, okay, hey, if I can get an elbow in front of this guy, I'll move over a little bit, take away the passing opportunity, and he clipped him as well. It was a good save by Metcalf, and maybe he's motivated to give a little some of that back now. We've got some riders down in the back of the lap, 221. Tiger Lacey getting tangled up with another rider as we look at the pass one more time. See, Brown was smart. He waited just enough to get his front wheel tucked back under the inside. Now, he stays a lot lower, and he's just going to aim for the inside. Leans in on him. Metcalf going, whoa, I didn't think you were going to cut over that far, but he's still staying with him. Here comes Brock Sellers starting to move up. Sellers trying to close in on his teammate, Ivan Tedesco. So it is. Mike Brown at first. Metcalf in second on the KTM. And the two Yamaha riders, Tedesco and Brock Sellers. At this point, Brock Sellers needs to move up because choice on the line when you get to the main event is so key, especially in this 125 East class. Well, I think Tedesco has got a chance to win this heat race, Todd. I mean, looking at his speed and everything he's able to do, he's just as fast as Brown out front. He's just gotten held up a little bit. He, he and his teammate Sellers actually held each other up just a touch about a lap, lap and a half ago, and he's broken free from that, it looks like now. If he can get around Metcalf, which he's coming up to a good section, after the first big triple, they go into a wide corner and then the whoop section. That's where Tedesco's been really strong. Red Go for it right there. there. Beautiful move. He triples all the way through that section and just carved out probably about 10 bike lengths of Mike Brown's lead in the process. And Brett Metcalf, for him, the trouble has gotten easier because on the backside of him now, he's got Brock Sellers, who's desperately trying to move up the ladder. Metcalf cutting that one in very tight because he knew Sellers was coming in. Meanwhile, Mike Brown out in front. Ivan Tedesco in second, and Brett Metcalf in third. This is heat number one, 125 East from Alliance Stadium. Yeah, Brown is... He can see that he's got a little bit of a lead, but it's still it's shrinking inch by inch. Tedesco making a couple little mistakes here and there. That's really costing him. He's running out of time. Well, Mike Brown in front now. He's got a, a lap rider, which is Tiger Lacey, who got tangled up with another rider, so he's down. Ivan Tedesco now working his way up this long back straightaway, trying to triple it. Tiger Lacey not giving him much room. Brock Sellers goes in tight and just pins him. Pins Metcalf up on the wall, so Brock Sellers now moves into third place. Now the lead is getting close. 
Tedesco, you can see the gap right now closing in. He just turned the fastest lap at a 50.6, a second faster than Brown. So Tedesco, as they come around this time, they'll get the white flag, and he has found his rhythm, and mistakes are gone, and his pace is faster than Brown. 20 riders going six laps, the top nine to the main event, the other 11 to the LCQ as the white flag is out. And we will see if Mike Brown can hold them off. Tedesco starting to get a little bit of a gap, but here's where he's been making his moves. And here he comes again, hot on Mike Brown's lap tail. Well, he's, was he still tripling twice to that rhythm section? Brown isn't, he reeled him in. Now he's got a chance to throw a little stuck move on him. And if nothing else, just let Brown know, hey, I'll be there for the main. I'm faster. Still owns the fastest lap of this race. Well, Ivan Tedesco, he's seen the aggressive move by Mike Brown, and Tedesco certainly has the ability to make a pass. He gets close enough, but right now, Brown's just not letting it happen. That right-hander coming up is his last chance. Yeah, he, oh. he went for it. If that was the main event, it would be different. No question about it as Mike Brown picks up the victory in heat number one. Ivan Tedesco will have to settle for second, but David, you got to think if there was a half a lap to go still, Tedesco might have been able to make the move, but Mike Brown, give him credit, he will pick up the victory. A hard-charging rider came from fifth to second in one lap and then moved up to the first. So Mike Brown is your heat winner in the 125 East, heat number one. When we come back to Houston, Texas, we'll have official results, plus we'll talk with our winner and the Thor Rider profile right after this short break. Welcome back to Houston. Let's take a look at our Honda Heat 1 official results from the 125 Heat number 1. It is Mike Brown picking up the victory, followed by Tedesco and Sellers. Metcalf, who got the whole shot, will have to settle for fourth, but he will move on to the final. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele. Right on. Well, a solid heat win for Mike Brown, the KG veteran, still chasing Brandon Justman in the points. I want to ask you about the pass on Metcalf. Solid. It's the one spot on the track where there's no jump. You pick that to move in on him, and then you have to shut him down. Talk about it. Yeah, it was a fast straight right after the triple there, and, uh, you know, I got beside him. I landed on the ground a little bit earlier than he did and got on the gas, and, you know, I got a wheel. I had to get around him, and, you know, he still had the inside on me. He could have put me over the bells, but it was clean racing, and, you know, I just kind of bonds out through the whoops. Right on. Brandon jessman has been going well in practice, as have you. Talk about the battle. Looking forward to the main. You see you guys get it together? Yeah, I'd like to see us come out one and two like Reed and Ricky was last week and, you know, battle out to the finish and, you know, whoever wins, wins. You know, it'd be a great race for both of us. Great. We're looking forward to the main. Thanks a lot. Okay, to all of you amigos, what's going on? I'm hanging out with the number 179 Team Solitaire, Eric Vallejo from Mexico. That's why I'm throwing a little bit of Spanish in there for my own little flavor. I'm sure it doesn't even really make sense, but Eric... Getting top four, you got three digits on your bike, guy. That's supposed to be like full factory guys only. What's going on with you? I've been training hard, I've been trying hard. You know, it's, uh, this is my seventh year as a pro rider in the 125 class, and you know, finally I'm in the top ten the points. I'm happy, and I want to go forward now. How do you transition from Mexico to the United States? Well, you guys have your own nationals down there, your own Supercross. Did you uh, come up as a pup? <laughs> Um, yeah, we got our own race back home, but we're not, it's nothing big like here, um, you know, it's starting to get bigger. I was actually just brought up racing here in the United States. Um, my dad knew that this is the place to be, you want to go anywhere in motocross, and since I was a kid, I've been racing here, just going back and forth, and um, it's been great, you know, this is, uh, my dream is being a, a rider, you know, for a motocross racer, and I'm living it, and having fun at it, and, you know, and, if I want to be somebody in motocross, you got to be here in the U.S., Supercross, and so here I am. You come out with uh, sombrero on. You know, tell us, are you just feeling a part of your culture, letting people know that you're from Mexico. What's the whole vibe with that? Yes, I just suddenly, this all happened last year. I was just thinking of something, you know, I mean, for one, to draw attention for sure. And um, I was just sitting at home just thinking, what can I do, what can I do? And, you know, I was like, hey, why not let people know that I am from Mexico with the big sombrero? And uh, it's, it's been catching on. The fans love it when I do the parade lap, I wave at the crowd, and it seems that, like everybody likes it. So I'm gonna keep doing it for the fans, and it, and it seems to uh, kind of relax me too before the start of the race. Like it's, I pay attention to the crowd, and the crowd pays attention to me, so it kind of gets my mind off the start and get the nerves going, you know. <laughs> so there you go. Now you know a little bit more about our 
favorite Mexican motocrosser, or maybe our only Mexican motocrosser, the 179, Eric Vallejo. This is 125 heat number two from Houston's Reliance Stadium. As we take a look at the overall leader right now in the 125 East, that's Brandon Jessman. I know Brandon's thinking right now, David, get points here and then cover yourself in Pontiac. Yeah, I mean, you can see the title. I mean, it's it's right there, but you still got to go through the act of the motions. You got to practice during the week. I mean, you can't just, you know, protect yourself in a padded room. You got to get out there and do it. So the, the less it's on your mind, the better. Kelly Smith, Eric Vallejo. Kelly Smith, uh, call him a whole shot specialist. He's all around great rider, but uh, Kelly Smith is looking very good the last few days. And of course, Eric Vallejo, 179, will be wearing our helmet cam as we take a look at the THQ starting grid. Brandon Jessman, Kelly Smith, Eric Vallejo, and Steve Boniface, who rode really well last week in St. Louis. Well, the 30 board is sideways, and this is heat number two, 125 East from Houston, Texas. Oh, just like clockwork. Kelly Smith to the front of the pack. They made a mistake, and look what happens. The whole shot turns into just getting bumped around like a pinball. He couldn't go for the triple. Now Jessamine is clear. On board with Eric Vallejo. He slides back to about eighth place right behind Shane Beth, the ECC rider. And Brandon Jessamine, I'll tell you what, boys, he's in danger of checking this guy out. He got a clean start once he got around Kelly Smith, and he's got some room to move now. Well, you know, you're as good and clever and experienced as Brandon Jessman. You just know how to get through a first corner and jump the obstacles down the first straightaway to put yourself in good position to take over the lead. You know, it, it wasn't just that Kelly Smith made a mistake. It was that Brandon Jessman made a good guess. Almost goes down right yep. there, lost the front end. So Brandon Jessman continues the lead, followed by Smith and Holmaster in third. We got to shake up a little bit in the back as the Yamaha rider starting to come through down this long straightaway. And the colors of the ECC team working their way up as well. There is Brandon Jessman, your leader. I'll tell you what, we talked about him smelling the title. He's been doing such a great job of being in the right place at the right time. Let's look at the start one more time. Now watch Vallejo on your left. He just gets on a wheelie to try to keep his balance. He closes everybody off, but Jessamine makes sure. Let me just get an elbow tucked in here so he can go down the next straightaway in the rhythm he wanted to use. So that works for the move into the lead. He hasn't been able to shake Kelly Smith, but I think he knows that he's got two or three more laps at this pace and he should be able to inch away just slightly. At least he's been able to do that so far, but Kelly is riding very well right now. He's inspired, he's keeping the rhythm of Jessamine right there in check, and he's got a pretty good lead over third now. Well, he's lucky. Kyle Garlo has gone down. We'll see him. He'll come into view. He'll be off the right side of the track. He went down the last lap. He looked injured. He is not getting up. They've gotten his bike out. But Jessamine will not have to deal with the yellow flags. The battle for third rage is on. That is 67. He's coming to the picture right there looking very good. Jeff Gibson, another ECC rider. Nice timing at the exit of that whoop section. He hits that big mound in the middle, jumps all the way into the first big one after that. You kind of jump into that blind, then he goes three and then two out. And that's the fastest timing, but not everybody has been able to do that consistently. Jessman, of course, out front has been able to, so is Kelly Smith. And the section where, where uh, the leader is really pulling away, he's coming up to now as these guys approach the entrance to it. So you got two lines, you can inside or outside to get in there, but down this next straightaway right here is where Jessman has been able to really put some time on the field. He's tripling that, and then he triples from there all the way into the turn. The same thing that we saw Tedesco do in the first heat to make up all that time on Brown. Well, Hoffmaster getting passed right there. Hoffmaster from Pearl City, Illinois, in the Yamaha Shogun Factory Yamaha. A lot of Yamahas in this 125 East heat number two, but it is all Suzuki right now as Brandon Jessman turns in a very fast lap time of 50.649. Brandon Jessman showing why he really is the favorite to win the 125 East. And as this is 20 riders going six laps in the top nine, going to remain the other 11 to the LCQ. David, I hate to look too far ahead to give these guys their due, but it really makes you look forward to the East-West shootout between Brandon Jessman and James Stewart. Look at that triple right there. And then another triple over that section of the corner. Kelly Smith doing it slightly different, safer behind him, but giving up a lot of time each lap. And Jessman is building the kind of confidence he needs to go into that East-West shootout and really be a problem. 
right now I think you know everyone's going well Stewart's got that one but you never know I mean if, if Jessman gets a start rides steady like he's doing right now and has done so far then uh, you get Stewart or somebody else a four start and it's too it's not, it's, it's not enough time to catch up to somebody ride as strong as Jessman has been able to ride lately Brandon Jessman now coming in some more yellow flags another rider has gone down looks like as the white flag comes up, 428, Tipper B. Wright out of Lubbock, Texas on the Yamaha answer. Yamaha has gone down right in front of the starting line. So two riders going down, really slow the race. Brandon right. Jessman in and perfect it, position. Yeah, he got collected and tied with uh, Ryan Mills, who also went down. So these guys, Mills running in 14. Well, we talked about the LCQ. He doesn't want to have to ride that, no. but it's his first season, and, you know, you got to have a few hardships to learn the ropes. And, you know, if he does actually make it to the, the level that he's dreamed of, and if you haven't had some of those mistakes along the way, you got to sort out, then you know, you're, you're lacking that experience. Well, Brandon Jessman on board the Suzuki coming around. Jessman from Palm Bell, Pennsylvania on the team. Sophie Suzuki Michelin. And Brandon Jessman is your winner. He picks up the victory in heat number two, 125 East. And a great run for him. Fast time Tedesco in heat one was a 50.084. Jessman was a 50.039. So very close. This is Eric Vallejo currently running the eighth place, operating the helmet can. And remember, in 125, it is making it into the top nine to get you into the main event. So the team solitaire rider looks like he did just that. Vallejo moving up one position into seventh place. Brandon Jessman, however, is your winner. We're going to step aside from Houston, Texas. When we come back, we'll have Suzuki's on track, plus official results and our winner interview. Stay with us. Everybody's riding and training together, and it's such a great sport, and it's good to do it on a Suzuki. The first Suzuki I had was a JR80, and man, ever since, I've been hooked to the brand. Just trying to have fun with it at first, and, uh, if you like it that much, just keep working at it, and eventually you'll get up here. The DRZ line's so awesome. Just like my bike, it's so fast, so easy to get used to. Such a variety to pick from. The whole family can go and get something they love. Suzuki. Take a look at our Suzuki official results. It's Brandon Jessman with the victory, followed by Smith, Gibson Blows, and Hoffmaster. Right now, let's check in with Cameron Steele, who is trackside. Well, heat number two winner, Brandon Jessman. He's the leader in the points, wins the heat. You got to feel this championship coming towards you a little bit now, don't you, Brandon? Uh, yeah, you know, that's my main goal is to come out and win this championship. But uh, it, you can't count your chickens before they hatch because this is racing, and uh, I mean, anything can happen. Mike Brown had a good heat race as well. I want to ask you, how's the track for racing? It seems like there's a lot of obstacles out there. Yeah, the track's pretty busy out there, but uh, my Sobe Suzuki got me out to a great start. Just have to get another good one in the main and stay, all that, stay out all that trouble happening in the back and uh, hopefully come away with another win. Right on. We're looking forward to the battle. Hey, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, Cameron. Right now, let's check out Suzuki's on track. Supercross has always been a patriotic sport, from the opening ceremonies to the gear that the riders wear. But now with what's happening in Iraq, the riders have stepped it up in their support of our troops overseas. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud I just want to say thanks to everybody that's, uh, you know, over in Iraq and all over there. And, uh, you know, we couldn't be here where we're at racing Supercross if it wasn't for them, you know, keeping us, uh, keeping us free. I can ride a bike, you know, better than most people, I guess. That, that doesn't make me special in any way. But the people that are over there and fighting and just following orders and, you know, trying to give other people freedom, that, that takes real courage. And to know, you know, going into a place you've never been in a hostile environment, you know, it just takes nerves of steel and I don't know how those people do it and uh, they're my biggest heroes and especially my brother you know so uh, he's good at his job so hopefully he'll come home safe and uh, hopefully they'll get the job done over there uh, everybody here is wishing wishing you guys the best and hurry home you know keep your Oakley boots clean and out of the sand and uh, keep charging forward and uh, be as safe as you can but yeah get this done as quick as you can and get back home hey to all the troops out there 
I wish I was right there in it with you because I want that guy just as bad as you do and do whatever it takes to get that dude. And I'm going to do whatever it takes too. Whatever I can help with, I'm going to help you. So be safe. Everyone over there, you know, doing your thing, hey, good luck, kick some ass, and, uh, you know, we're, we're all behind you 100%, and thank you for everything. We're over here having fun, and you guys are over there doing the dirty work, and it's greatly appreciated. That's awesome. Well, I've, I've always been proud to be American, and uh, I talked to my helmet painter, Robert Utney, and uh, I gave him some ideas of what I'd like to see on my helmet. And I just, I'm doing it out of respect for all those that are uh, over fighting in the, the war with Iraq. Uh, just good, good luck, and uh, thanks for, uh, you know, fighting for America. Appreciate it. Back. Houston was full of surprises in 2002. A virtual unknown rider from France, Eric Sorby, blasted out of the gate and took the whole shot. A crash in practice and another in the main would see points leader James Stewart finish in 10th. While his closest competition in the 125 West Series, Travis Preston, found himself chasing Kawasaki rider Matt Walker all the way to the podium. Matt had to earn his first ever Supercross win, making several passes along the way. Preston's second place would put him only 10 points behind Bubba in the overall, and Eric Sorby would finish in third. If you can, join us in person for the THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series. Upcoming dates include Dallas, Texas on the 12th of April, Salt Lake City on the 26th of April, and we wrap things up in Las Vegas on May 3rd at Sam Boyd Stadium. And if you can't make it to a Supercross event in person, you can still experience the live feel on sxgp.com. Now we kick things off 7 p.m. local venue time. That's www.sxgp.com for Supercross Live live on sxgp.com. Stay with us. The main event is coming up right here on ESPN. ESPN and ESPN2. Welcome back to Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas and the THQ 125 AMA Supercross Series. It's time for our McGrath moment. Sideways. This week we look back to the year Whoa, 1998, the venue, Atlanta's Georgia Dome. Jeremy battled with friend and teammate Jimmy Button the outside, for the Jimmy. top spot on the podium Windham. in the main event. Emmy in that order with Doug Henry and Jimmy Button in third and fourth, and then Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk. Now he can see that his teammate, oh, his teammate McGrath had just made the pass. And I'm sure they've been in this position before, now it makes a little bit more important, but I'm sure Jimmy knows what to do. Jeremy McGrath cutting in front of Buck, but Button coming back with the lead. He's not going to give it to him. He's going to make him earn it. Right here going wide and kind of giving it to him, but Jeremy came up short there, so watch Jimmy's line here. He's going to go wide. Jeremy McGrath to the inside. Button leaping all the way. Does he have enough momentum to come back on Jeremy McGrath as they go over the triple? Chaparral Yamaha is out in front once again. Incredible, his record. Over the years, McGrath taking his time. Jeremy McGrath, the checkers. It's now time to look at our Nissan qualifying highlights from the 125 LCQ. It's all about the start. Tiger Lacey had a good line, but he was just shut down. And out of nowhere came 771, Kyle Garo. Number 96, Ryan Mills is all over him, put the pressure on, eventually got around, picks up his first win in Supercross, his rookie season. He looked good the whole way, had a nice lead on everybody. The youngster would go on to pick up the victory and make it into the main event. And those are your Nissan qualifying highlights. If you look at the final results, it's Mills, Summy, Lacey, Garo, and Ryan Abrigo rounding out the top five. It's now time for the 125 main event. As we look at Michael Brown on the starting line, he'll be joined by Brandon Jessman, who's just starting to pull in. Brown grabbing a brand new set of goggles. 
I'll tell you what, what we saw in the first two races, David, this should be very interesting. Brandon Jessman dons a new pair of lids as well. Uh, Jessman, Brown, Brock Sellers, and then you factor in Ivan Tedesco. Well, Tedesco's really going to throw a wrench in all of this and make it good. He's lined up in a good spot on the start, so he should be able to... Uh, he's going to be a little bit to the inside of, it looks like, Jessamine and Sellers and all the other guys, a little bit wide. Brown is just to his right, just to his right, I mean, so... You see how important it is to make sure these guys don't get any dirt inside those goggles when they put them on. They'll bounce around there and get in your eye, and people are wondering, what's going on with Tedesco? He's got dirt in his eye, so... Well, let's, let's take a look at our THQ track map one more time, and uh, as they go in that first turn, it really gets exciting. Well, you know, what I like about this is right off the bat, the rhythm section that these guys encounter, you're going to see a lot of passing and some mistakes and stuff happening through there. I mean, it's, it's a different timing when you come off the start than it is once you're in progress with the race, but that section is going to separate them a little bit. They go over a big triple. Then the whoop section this week is much different. That first section can make or break a lot of time there, and they get a jump in the middle to break things up. More rhythm sections leading into another triple and then onto the finish line jump, but not before they go over that huge CE mountain, the highest point on any Supercross track this year. There's a lot of dirt out there. Well, 18 previous visits as we take a look at the Honda starting grid here for the 125cc East main event with Justin Brown, Kelly Smith, Ivan Tedesco, Jeff Gibson's look good. Then there's Eric Vallejo who will be manning the helmet camp and the rest of the group as the 30 boards go sideways. 18 previous visits to Houston with 17 different winners who will be denied and they're off the line. Well, that's a tough one. Looked like Kelly Lacey, Tiger Lacey, excuse me, might have got the whole shot. And Lacey goes to the front of the pack. Here's a guy who had to battle back through the LCQ, David. And here he is with Brock Sellers in tow and Brandon Jessman behind him. Mike Brown is way in the back. Yeah, Mike Brown is uh, maybe 15th at best. And it's terrible in, the ter in terms of the championship because Jessamine is going for second. Now, he's got a pretty good buffer back to the guys that can really challenge him. Uh, he's going to have a tough time getting around Sellers, and I expect Lacey to be there for a little while, but I don't think he can match these guys' pace for the whole race. Already, Sellers putting the pressure on Lacey, almost losing the front end of that corner. These guys checking out from the pack already, and Tedesco and Brown are together coming up from behind. Yeah, and that's going to cause all kinds of problems for Mike Brown. Just getting around Tedesco is a job, but they are back in 10th and 11th place. And look at this, Sellers having problems. Gets past Tiger Lacey. Goes Brock Sellers, but Tiger Lacey comes back hard. Nice move. That just, you know, when you're a privateer like that, you got a three-digit number on your bike, and you take it back to the best riders, man. You just all of a sudden gain some respect. You didn't do anything dirty there. You're just racing. Brandon Jessman currently sitting in third, the overall points leader in the 125 East class. Starting the fourth issue just a little bit. Expect him to be patient. He has no reason to gamble on passes like that, but he certainly is going to race hard and not let anyone take advantage of him. Tiger Lacey continues to lead the CRS Team Safety Motorsport Outlet and the racing on board. Oh, no. Yamaha. Jessamyn, I was just about to say, Todd, that Jessamyn was being too nice. He was just trying to wait, let the race come to him, and he was just getting beat up from behind. He was starting to get passed, and he actually got passed in a way that it took him out. Now he's behind Brown. Oh, wow. So it, for the title, this is great. We're going to see some real racing, and we're going to see what Jessman's made of. Well, Brock Sellers is in the lead. We saw him pick up a victory. And Sellers on the Yamaha looked very good when he got his first victory in Atlanta on the second event of the 125 East. We'll see what he's made of, as you said. See if he can hold off this lead. Tiger Lacey isn't going away real fast. But he's very fortunate he doesn't have Mike Brown and Brandon Jessen breathing down his back. Well, I don't think he's going to this whole race. I mean, Kelly Smith doing a good job up in third, but just amazing turn of events here with Jessman looking like he was pretty much in control. Then I was thinking, well, maybe he's being too cautious, and then all of a sudden going down. And you know that Brown and Tedesco saw that when they went by. Brown had to be pretty pumped, going, well, that's some points for me. There's Jessam at the top of your screen, goes down, and he just gets pinned. It, yeah. looked, like, it looked like Metcalf just, just stopped. He had nowhere to go. We talked about that. Your momentum's carrying you down the hill, and he just had nowhere to go. Just dumped the bike. Mike well, Brown had to have gone by and thought Christmas came early this year. Fastest guy on the racetrack right now is Tedesco, for sure. He's running sixth or fifth. Take yeah. that back. Now make that uh, possibly fourth. 
Jones going wheel to wheel with Tiger Lacey. And he'll square him right here, watch. Tuck under the inside. And that's it. When we return to Houston, Texas, we'll have more of the 125 main event. Call your cable or satellite provider now. Welcome back to Houston, Texas and Reliance Stadium. You are watching the 125 East main event. Well, Ivan Tedesco, he has been out with a, a variety of injuries. We haven't seen him for the last three weeks, but the 21-year-old, originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico, now living in Lake Elsinore, California, has really turned things up today. And I think a lot of people, Mike Brown and Brandon Justin included, probably said, gosh, couldn't you have waited another week to come back? Because he has certainly thrown a wrench in the system today, but I think you're right, David. With nine laps to go, Brandon Justin and Mike Brown are going to have to wage their own battle out here. Yeah, they're not. I, I doubt if... If Jessman's thinking a whole lot about the championship right now, he's just worried about where Brown is and making sure that he doesn't put too many riders between him and and uh, collect some points. And Brown keeps picking up riders. He has now picked up Tiger Lacey, so he's behind Steve Boniface. And Brown is turning in some fast laps. Let's get a clock on him and see where he sits as they enter the whoop section. And here's that rhythm break right there. Brown handles it no problem. He starts to close in on Boniface as they make that left-hand turn. Brown setting him up on the inside. And this is where, towards the end of these races, riders start to make little mistakes here and there, and Brown just keeps getting stronger and faster. And so does Jessamine. Both these guys are extremely fit. Brock Sellers in first, Smith in second, Tedesco in third, Metcalf in fourth, Boniface in fifth, and Brown in sixth. Tiger Lacey sits in seventh, and Mills, Jessamine back in ninth place. Sellers printing in a last lap time of 50.257. Smith of 50.701, Tedesco of 50.779. Just, just the last one, just the best one actually of the race, not the last one, was a 49.7 by Tedesco. And, and he, he got around. Up. Yep. He, he got did. around Smith. So it's Yamaha, Troy, first and second. That's what they were hoping for at the start of the season. And he's looking good with both of them running up front in the first race of the series back in Minneapolis. Sellers actually did well, but it was a disaster for Tedesco and has been ever since. Not in terms of speed or talent or any of that, just stupid things happening. And here, it's in a great position to come back in, land on the podium, regardless of where it's going to be. It looks like he will be standing up there. Kelly Smith in third place right now on the Yamaha YZ250F. Team RacerHouse.com, SRT Yamaha SoCal, originally from Ludington, Michigan, 23 years of age. Been great on the whole shot, an eight-year pro. He only goes 5'8", 150. Not a real big guy, but he has been great on the whole shots. Well, the thing about getting all those starts is that you just run up front. You get used to the pace of the riders that are the best. You know, and you learn little things. Oh, he leaves it on that much longer going into that sweeper. Oh, he runs the left down the loops and jumps the last three. Okay, I got that now. And, you know, you add that to what you're already doing, doing including a whole shot, and it lands you pretty close to the front. And you're not nervous anymore when right. you hole shot every race. You know, you might have been at, at first, but he, he's so used to being up front that when he's up there, he doesn't ride as nervous as some of the other guys that get a hole shot here and there. Brock Seller continues to lead. Seller's starting to make little mistakes here and there, and that's allowing Tedesco to inch up on him. You think these guys being teammates would would ride kind of careful towards each other and I'm sure they will but I know Tedesco wants to win and I know that Sellers hates to lose so seeing if those guys can pass each other is that'll be interesting and Brown continues to hold uh, Jessamine back there he's got two riders between himself and Jessamine so there's some valuable points right there that stays that way but Jessamine is all over those guys and he caught them fast when we return to Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas, we will have the conclusion of the 125 East main event. Stay with us. Welcome back to Houston. We are on the final laps of a very exciting 125 East main event. Our current leader, Brock Sellers. Jessman trying now to get around Boniface and Brown. This is a great race. It's not like we thought it would be in the back of the pack because this one is four, five, and six. Jessamine moving up, obviously, to seventh position. Watch Jessamine's line right here. It should pay off. 
be able to get out to the inside. And I thought he may, might be able to block. Now he doubles over the man. That was impressive. He went for it right there. He should be able to get the position back. Gives him a little love tap just to make sure. And Ryan Mills, and this kid is joined the party and having some fun riding up front for a change. He's been kind of running around 10. You know, pretty much all these other races. But well, he's working his way a little closer to the front. There's one and two right now, Brown and Jessamine. And the point, overall points leader, Jessamine is your leader. Brown is sitting in second place. And it'll be interesting to see what happens when they get together. It's amazing though how far back they are because Sellers and Tedesco are just gone. And what's impressing me is that Sellers has just decided, you know what, I, I want to win this really bad. And just doing whatever it takes. He's just running that front wheel just straight into some of those whoops and just soaking it up. And Jessman gets past Mike Brown. And look at this. It looks like Browning just had a problem there for a second. Jessman looks over waiting to see some aggressive turns by Brown and he's just nowhere near to do it. So Brown on the gas hard. Jessman now trying to get away from as fast as possible. Unbelievable racing. Well, Jessamine is he's de definitely broken free and now Brown is getting harassed a little bit by Ryan Mills. Here's the move again, Jessamine to the inside. He did that last lap and I thought it would pay off, but he didn't quite have enough. This time, no problem, caught Brown by surprise. Sellers turned another lap, two seconds faster than uh, Tedesco running in second. So he is on his way to a win here. And I don't think Tedesco could be too unhappy with a second place. I mean, the win was right there, but Considering the way things have gone for him lately, he's having to miss races and jump back in and get second with his teammate out in front of him is a pretty good night. Well, it's starting to make things interesting for next week when we go to Pontiac as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch. There are the last laps for Sellers and Tedesco as they split. It looks like Sellers is starting to pull away from him. Meanwhile, Mike Brown, it's amazing the championship battle is shaping up in fifth and sixth place, and Brown has just lost touch with Brandon Jessamine. Had a terrible line right there with the rider down in the middle of the track, so he had to go wide around that. And that was Jessamine's Kelly Smith. Lead. Yeah, Jessamine's lead continues to move on Brown. It's been a perfect opportunity for Brown to pick up a position, some extra points on Jessamine, but it's not going to happen. The white flag is out for Brock Sellers. Ivan Tedesco continues to run in second place with Metcalf running in third. Good run for Metcalf. And, and uh, Jessamine, I mean, he had his problems. He got dropped way back. And he's still thinking he can possibly get by Metcalf and put another couple of points on Brown. It might just be the nail in the coffin if he can do it, plus the fact that he was able to ride back through Brown and beat him. Well, he hasn't won since Atlanta, but this is going to be a sweet victory in the Lone Star State for number 18 on board the Yamaha. Brock Sellers takes the checkered flag in the win in Houston, Texas. Ivan Tedesco will take second, as you pointed out, David. He's been away, but the battle really is on between Jessamine and the rest of the crew. And Jessamine trying to get one more position. Will he do it? It doesn't look like he had enough run at that. But Mike Brown, unfortunate that he drops back. So Jessamine will get fourth. Brown will get fifth. But the big night belongs to Brock Sellers, number 18. Talk about momentum going into the final race. We have to do some quick math here, find out what David Stanfield can whip up on his abacus, and we'll see what things shake down in Pontiac. But when we come back to Houston, Texas, we will have final results, plus we'll talk with our winners. Stay with us. Welcome back to the THQ 125 AMA Supercross Series. We're in Houston, Texas at Reliant Stadium. We take a look at our Suzuki main results. It's Sellers, Tedesco, Metcalf, Jessamine, and Brown rounding out the top five. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron. Well, that's pretty cool. We haven't seen him on the podium since his second race in Atlanta, where he also won. Brock Sellers, our winner tonight. Brock, everybody at home, and I want to know, where have you been? I've been hurt. Uh, I got hurt, and I've been, been riding injured. And uh, last weekend, Mike Brown took me out. And uh, I was riding good last weekend, and that ended that night. And tonight, I didn't worry about cutting them guys off on the start or anything. I just rode my own race, got out front. I actually bent my shifter and didn't think I was going to be able to race. I, was in, I couldn't shift at all. It was like right by my foot peg. And I was shifting with my heel and stuff, but you know, I want to win next weekend and you know, see what I got for Stewart. I mean, he's riding good on the West Coast, and it, it ought to be a showdown at uh, Vegas. I think we're a little bit faster than what some people think. It's a pretty tough coast over here. Right on, Brock Sell has a great job. He's looking forward to the battle with Stewart in Las Vegas. I don't think you guys should go away. Supercross is heating up. 
All right, thank you very much, Cameron. As we take a look at the Suzuki Series standings, things have tightened up just a little bit with Brock Sellard's victory, but it is still Brandon Jessamine out in front, Mike Brown in second, and Brock Sellard in third. Let's send it back down to Cameron. Well, check it out. Hot Sauce Ivan Tedesco making the podium in second place. We haven't seen him race in a while. He rang his bell once. He was out. Then he hurt his ribs at Daytona. But now you're back. It's got to be gratifying. Yeah, you know, I'm just glad to be back here in Houston. I like it here. And, uh, you know, I've been injured. And I don't, you know, my endurance ain't that great. I've only had about a week on the bike. And, uh, you know, I'm feeling good. And hopefully next weekend, uh, put some more laps on the bike. And hopefully I can win next weekend. Right on. Congratulations, Ivan. Good job. All right, thank you very much, Cameron. Great job, as always, and what a great night at a fantastic stadium as we christen Reliance Stadium for Supercross. Hopefully, we will be back often. So on behalf of my colleagues, Jamie Little and Cameron Steele and the champ, David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from Houston, Texas. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long from Houston, Texas.